Okay, in this video I want to talk about uh, simple interest and compound interest and basically what the difference between the two of them is. Um, I think any adult, really especially in the current economic climate, um, it, you really want to have, I think, a, a decent, at least a rudimentary understanding of finances and some of this stuff. Um, I think it's easy, you know, this is, this is definitely practical math, okay, so... Um, again, and, and this is nothing heavy, I just want to illustrate the difference between the two So in this video. So suppose you walk into the bank with $10,000 um, and you get an APR or an annual percentage rate. Um, so an annual percentage rate, that's what APR stands for, annual percentage rate, um, of 6%, which is probably, if you're doing anything safe, um, it's probably a bit high, but I'm certainly not an economic expert, but the math of it I can do. So let's look at two different parts. Let's look at how much you would have five years later if you get simple interest that's compounded, um, or excuse me, that accrues annually. I don't want to say compound. Um, so if you get simple interest that accrues annually, and suppose you also get what's called compound interest and that also accrues annually so let's look at the difference between the two let's do simple interest first okay so what simple interest is so you walk into the bank with um, ten thousand dollars okay and that's what we want to deposit this value of ten thousand this is what's called your typically your principal okay Principal. Okay, not the person at school. That's the amount of money you walk in there with. Okay, so you've got a principal of ten thousand dollars in this case. Um, something else too in these videos, you certainly, I would say, want to make sure you're pretty. You know, you're you're okay with um, percentages and decimals as a whole. Um, you know, just in general. If not, some of this will be a little confusing. So you might want to start there. But okay, so back to this one. Um, the idea is if you get simple interest, so we're looking at the simple interest case. Simple interest, you earn interest only on your principal. So interest, um, simple interest, you only earn interest, only earn interest on your starting principal. Okay, and this is bad if you are trying to save money. In general, if uh, you're probably not going to want simple interest if, for example, you're saving money. Well, how much money would I earn in one year? So again, we're looking at five years total. That was our original problem, five years total. Okay, well, per year on my principal, I'm going to earn 6%. So that simply means I need to multiply that number by 0 0.06. So I'll get 6% of $10,000. And 6% of $10,000 is going to be $600. So you're going to earn $600 um, in interest. That's how much interest you're going to earn in one year. Okay. So again, we're expressing the, the 0 0.06. That's our APR as a decimal. Okay, so you make 600 bucks in a year if you deposit um, $10,000 at 6% simple interest. Well, so at the end of the first year, at the end of the first year, or let's just say, um, so at the end of year one, let's suppose they compound it right at the very end, you would have your original starting $10,000 plus another 600 so you've got a net amount of ten thousand six hundred dollars in the bank now okay so that's sitting in the bank and on the next year again you're gonna calculate your new interest value but the difference in this part is again the only thing that earns interest is that starting principle so even though you've got ten thousand six hundred in the bank you're still only getting an extra six percent of your ex of your original principal okay so this is the big distinction this is the key about simple interest so that means during the course of the next year I'm going to earn an extra six hundred dollars so that means at the year of year at the year of year at the end of year two I'm going to have an extra six hundred dollars so if that means if I had ten thousand six hundred before I'm now going to have eleven thousand two hundred in the bank 
Well, the same thing, during year three, I'm going to earn another $600. And then during year four, I'm going to earn another $600. During year five, I'm going to earn another $600. So really, I've earned um, $600 five times. So in total, I've now got $13,000 in the bank. Um, if I get simple interest of 6%, for five years on ten thousand dollars so not bad um, you know you're making six hundred bucks a year um, I'd take it so okay so that is simple interest and I think you could probably come up with a formula for it um, probably the interest you would owe would be your principal times your rate your APR times the number of years I think that would work so let's look at the more interesting and probably realistic case uh, in the real world is what's called compound interest Okay, so credit cards, mortgages, student loans, um, most interest on these accrues, um, the way it's compounded is it's compounded either annually, it, at least it's not simple interest. It may be compounded um, numerous, numerous times during the year, but the, the, the idea is, um, the idea with compound interest is that basically your interest also earns interest. If I can spell. Okay, so this is a good thing if you're trying to save money because the extra money is also going to accrue extra money. It's bad if your credit card compounds your, um, your interest because then you're going to owe more and more money at the end of every month. And, of course, guess what your bank does? Okay, they compound it pretty frequently okay so again at the end of year one at the end of year one I've got my starting principal of ten thousand dollars but now I haven't accrued an extra six percent on top of that so again this is my starting principal okay so my starting principal and this other number would represent the interest earned Well, again, 6% of 10,000, we said that's 600. So you're going to have a total of 10,600 in the bank. Okay. So let me give myself a little more room here. 10,600. Okay, so let's, let's write down. So the end of year one. So we've got 10,600 in the bank. Okay, so now at the end of year two, How much money would we have in the bank? Well, now our principal, so now the idea is this 10,600 is earning interest, not just the original amount, okay? So not just the original 10,000. We're now also earning interest on this extra 600, and this is a good thing, again, if you're saving money. Okay, so now at the end of um, year one, we had 10,600, so that's in the bank. And a good thing, um, again, is is that we earn six. Uh, we earn six percent of our ten thousand six hundred. Notice that we can rewrite this as the number. We can equivalently write this as if you factor out the ten thousand six hundred, we would have one plus point oh six left over. So it says we would get ten thousand six hundred multiplied by one point zero six. Okay, notice I could have also written 10,600 as 10,000 times 1.06. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do here um, eventually is I'm going to try to spot a pattern out of this. Um, I don't think I'm going to do it just yet in this one just because I want to get the basic idea across. But, okay, so now if I pu punch this into my calculator, I'm going to take 10,600 and multiply that by 1.06, that'll give me the total amount, and it says now at the end of year two, I've got $11,236 in the bank. Okay, so at the end of year two, I've got 11236 Notice we've earned a little more than $600 because 
we've got a little more than ten thousand dollars in the bank to earn interest on okay so this is good so we can continue this calculation um, for each year and let's do that here real quick so at the end of year three what would happen I would have my starting principal for that year of eleven thousand two thirty six again you can simply multiply this by the number one point zero six to get your new net amount so let me multiply that one point zero six okay and in this case I'm getting the value one one nine one zero and sixteen cents okay so at the end of year four I would take my new amount, 11, 9, 10, 16, multiply that by another 1.06. So multiply that by 1.06. I get this to be 1, 2, 6, 2, 4, 7, 6, 9, 6. In general, um, when you're dealing with money especially, it's better to be more precise than less precise. So notice I am not rounding or doing anything whatsoever. Um, I'm just, just calculating it directly. So again, now at the end of year five, we're going to have our starting 12,624.7696, and we're going to multiply that by 1.06, and that'll be my net amount of money. Um, at the end of year five. It should be more than 13,000 and of course it is. We get 13,382. Now I will round it off um, and 26 cents. Okay, so this will be the amount of money when you compound your interest annually. And notice again under simple interest, using simple interest we only ended up with thirteen thousand dollars in the bank and again this makes sense because the interest is earning interest so you have more money earning interest it keeps kind of snowballing so you end up with a little a little bigger chunk of change so again maybe kind of a long-winded um, idea um, or explanation but this is the whole key is just understanding the simple principle of or the simple idea that principle um, the principal kind of keeps increasing from year to year so you're earning interest on on a larger and larger amount so alright I hope this video makes some sense um, this is going to be kind of the first part of quite a different uh, bunch of different financial topics that I want to talk about again I think it's uh, very useful stuff I think it's a shame they don't teach this stuff starting in elementary school to kids um, something should be done. I think it's terrible. Um, so anyway, um, I hope this helps. Feel free to look around or post comments or ask questions if you have any. All right, good luck out there.